First of all, I want to give you all a super warm applause. You did amazing work. And we're all so proud of you. You have worked tirelessly. It was emotional, it was tiring, it was exciting, it was creative, it was stressful. It was also maybe a bit boring for some, which should not happen, but some people told me, oh, it was boring. but it eh, should not happen, but it happened regardless. So that's a huge learning for us. And I wanna start by say, reminding you once again who are your hack mothers and fathers? It's we publish in opendata.ch. In case you have any questions, critique, remarks, or love letters to send, send them our way. And also, we're going to say a big thank you at the end, but just as you, so you can tell who was involved in this whole creation of the hackathon. We had a lot of partners and helpers and sponsors. So thank you in advance. And do never forget to post what you've done or share it on LinkedIn or on Twitter. The hashtag is the same and has been the same for the last three months. It's Rijoha22. Tag us, tag yourself, tag everybody you love. And we're going to do it super smoothly and swiftly here. We have only three things to do today, which are the next steps, what's happening after the hackathon. I'm going to do it before all the challenge project presentations because once the last presentation has been presented everybody completely attention attention span drops to zero then we'll have the presentations and then we'll have a huge thank you session for everybody involved thank you so much for adhering to the code of conduct um we always um, share it so you know treat everybody with kindness you can also apply that in your everyday life but so you know hackathons are based on openness and kindness and amazing workflows and also very important, you have it. You have them on your table, and I know how, who is here right now, and if you did not answer the survey, I will haunt you until I get an answer from you. So this is the survey QR code. Please open your phone, take the image, fill out the survey. We rely so heavily on your feedback. This is the only way we can improve and really honor our commitment to growth um, and make the next hackathon or the next Rijoha even better and more amazing and more maybe challenging or creative. So we do really need your feedback and thank you in advance so much for your time. I'm going to go th super fast through the next part, but just so you know what is possible in the realm of hackathons and open data and uh, we publish. Okay, so if you feel, hmm, my project is amazing and it might actually deserve some money or some prototype funding, um, in January we have the demo day of the last cycle of the prototype fund, which is a project we have at opendata.ch. You can also like check out the QR code or you can go on our website and check out the date. Here you will see the projects that have been funded. However, the next cycle has been just, I think, approved. So next year there will be another prototype fund. And if you are uh, keen to continue your project or any other project, this is an opportunity for you to uh, get some seed funding. And if you are really into hackathons and anything government, APIs and tech, uh, we have a hackathon in Bern in late March called GovTech. We do not have a website yet, but you can get more updates there. OpenData.ch newsletter, save the date, you see the dates, um, keep, stay updated. If you love what we did and you want to bring it more into a legal kind of realm, there's the Open Legal Lab at the end of April, beginning of May. Also in Bern, in Macklingen, which is an amazing, amazing location. And end of September, mid-September, we'll have the energy data lag for everybody of you who love climate stuff and data visualizations and how energy impacts our world. This is also your place to be. There is a lot of partners involved, so if you're actually looking for a new job in the energy sector, it might be your place. Then end of September in Geneva, we have the Glam Hack. Glam is all things, galleries, libraries, archives, and museum. Actually, Wikimedia is also heavily involved, of course. Um, at the Museum of Ethnographie à Genève, which is ethnographic museum in Geneva. So there we will be looking everything that has to do with cultural responsibility, appropriation, ethnographic, um, colonialism, and so on in a, during a hackathon. So if this tickles your fancy, it might be your place to be. All right. This is it. We have eight presentations. I think, I hope, 
And I want to ask now the first project to come on stage and present their project, which is Briefing in Gipfeli, challenge number two. And Siri comes on stage with nobody, with Tomas. <laughs> and they deserve a warm, amazing applause. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. We can. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Somebody added something right now. Present. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, let's start. Um, so, Briefing and Giffily. Everybody knows this project. Uh, it's about printing Bajur briefing in coffee shops. So, we have this printer and five stack which uh, from theory supposed to be very good, but it had a lot of challenges we faced. Uh, we had incomplete APIs, missing features, faulty firmware, but that's, I guess, a normal on Hackathon that not everything works perfect. Uh, Cyril did some, some good job on that, but about that uh, in the next slide. What else we have? Uh, the API only accepts ASCII, so we could not have like special wonderful umlauts, no emoticons, no nothing like that. The briefings were very long and with the font size, the default font size of the printer, it would take like a tree to, to, <laughs> to print one. Uh, the problem was the briefing we have, the content of the briefing was in HTML only, so we needed some parsing to, to get what we really wanted as we, we could use only text and images. And another one, small one, the, the, the dark images were barely visible and there were also GIFs, so animated images and it's hard to present them on uh, yes, static paper. Unless we could print frame by frame GIFs, maybe that's, a, that's even more paper. Uh, what we did, so we've been actually successful, right, with this? I don't know when to do the demo, maybe now. Uh, so we should attach some pictures, but didn't have enough time for the for the, for adding it to the presentation, uh, but we have some. I think Carl, you have right. The proof of uh, proof of that we did it. We can we can maybe show it around the room. Everybody can watch it. <laughs> yeah, we can we can print one, a new one, but you can you can watch on this. And what we did is uh, after all the all the approaches with the current firmware, uh, Cyril decided to write a new firmware which basically prints briefing on start. So we, we, we push this firmware into the device. So this device work differently than any others. It always prints the briefing uh, whenever uh, we start it. So we have also this feature that whenever we reset the device, it prints the new one. So now it's the feature. When you go to the coffee shop, you reset the device and you get the new briefing. That's the feature. Uh, firma, uh, so how it works, the firmware takes an image from a Git repo with a briefing in a bit bitmap format. So the limitations about the ASCII and also a big font, uh, we decided to do the bitmap uh, format of the whole text and all the images and print it directly as a bitmap. So we're not using the text feature of the, uh, of the mm, printer but bitmap print of the of the of the printer uh, there's also a github workflow pushing a new briefing every day uh, so it generates the bitmap image based on the content uh, and puts it to the uh, github repo based on the mailchimp api and archive uh, yeah and we have text with utf8 images in full width which was also a bit of a challenge right that we had a the firmware, all, the firmware was faulty that it only limited to some size and we had like a half of the uh, paper only filled with images and text and there was a lot of debugging and hacking and checking out how it works. So, you wanna run it, maybe? Or are you running it? Okay. So it says the bit of paper, but it's still a very long text. So. 
we are not sure if this is the actual uh, desired effect because I, I, I remember Sami was excited to see it, like a very long <laughs> printing that people like, what is this thing? <laughs> who, who did, what did he buy, right? <laughs> How many gift files? But now it's like a compact. <laughs> And uh, we, we actually added a new feature. It's actually printed on a on a paper you can stick to the wall or something. So yeah. Mm, okay. Still to do. So it's a proof of concept. Uh, to make it to the coffee shops, we need to hook into their software printers format. So it's a uh, it's probably a different yeah thing to do. But Additional the, work. But the bitmap is adjustable. Yeah, that's true. The bitmap is adjustable. So the part to generate the bitmap would be could be reused, but how to put it into the printer and when to put it, because in the Gipfeli shops you have uh, a receipt and probably after the receipt you would need to print something, so it would need to be to hooked into their software and stuff like that, so, so that's, that's to do. And uh, we also wanted to parse links and maybe print QR codes, but there are a lot of them, a lot of links, and probably only some of them should be uh, printed as a QR code, one of them would be the, uh, because in the briefing you have a question of the day, so maybe question of the day would be nice to have a QR code, even for answers, yes, no, but that would need to require some special things. It's just, just finished, yeah. <laughs> you want to add something? Sir? Thank you so much, Tomasz. Wait, 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 you're not leaving yet. So, are there any questions? Do you think it would be possible to print it uh, quicker in future? <laughs> with a different printer, but not with this one. But the normal registers printer are way faster. Mm. This is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need five to wait 10 minutes. Five minutes to read it. It's, it's slow, slow living instead of everything fast and online. And, and yes, no, I think you need to come closer. <laughs> Uh, a cool hack with the bitmap, um, but it wasn't it not too big for the memory of the printer, or could that be a problem? I mean, because bitmaps are really big, no? Uh, so it uh, it it is now connected through Wi-Fi through my phone, and it streams it directly and prints it on the go. I have a question. What is parse? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, wonderful applause for team number two, basically, but challenge number one, project number one, well done! <laughs> and you realized I forgot some very important information to share with you. You have five minutes, not three, not two. You have five minutes, and I thought this was way too much time, but you actually managed to fill it up, well done. Um, and these five minutes are so that we try to finish before five. Okay. Next on stage, Daten Cockpit Klima Journalismus, challenge number three. Here on stage with Gami and Gami. <laughs> Warm applause for her as well. <laughs> so the challenge was to, um, so the whole data uh, visualization thing. Uh, how do we make, how can we present data? Uh, what is uh, important? and uh, where do we get the data from, just for reminding. So we had um, different ideas and because we were a big group, we were able to follow them all, which was really nice. So we checked what data is available in Basel because we needed to like narrow it down to some place, right? And we really wanted it to be local. So we yeah, we started searching about Basel and actually we found we were surprised to see that there is quite some data available. And we could make a list of all data we find about energy, environment, uh, transport or mobility and the media. Sorry, it's written in German. Uh, yeah, but guess it's okay. Um, and then looking at those data, we had ideas what we can do with them. And our main ideas were uh, trends, uh, like how we, call, uh, how we talk about, or how the media talk about data. How can we make those data vi uh, like uh, presented or visu visualized? Uh, can we actually like compare 
this data with the um, city goals for climate. We thought that might be interesting for uh, readers to like not just have data, but also like uh, some value, like are we going anywhere? Like, are we, hello? <laughs> Um, and um, we also thought it might be a nice idea to also like display a list of events um, which are related to climate issues so we could have something of like actions or solutions or whatever like you could actually act on as a reader. Um, <coughs> the challenges we faced were this SMD um, um, kind of uh, website where actually a lot of data is available but you're not allowed to use them, which was a pity. Um, especially for some uh, subjects we wanted to cover, which would ha it would have been perfect, but yeah, you can't use it unless you ask in advance, but we haven't, so yeah. And then the climate uh, goals for the city of Basel are not always like super measurable, so it wasn't super easy to, like we couldn't just like make you know, like goals, what we use now, and just compare it. So we had to find a workaround. I will show you later. Um, then in some data, we don't really know um, why they behave in a certain way. I will also show you later. Uh, and then the fact that uh, our time was limited to two days, then we had to make some traces, what we do, what we don't do. Um, the stack, we used Postgres uh, data database for those who know, and uh, obs observable, I will show you right away. Uh, it's what we use to display the data and make uh, some kind of um, a prototype. Um, yeah, so as a result, we have this data list with, with all data we gathered, which is also available for use now. We made a mock-up for the design, then we actually um, like implemented it in observable. Maybe you can show it. Can you scroll up? Yeah, exactly. So this is observable. On top, you can see the climate cockpit. Uh, the idea would be to have this uh, interactive map at the top, which is kind of uh, fun, and you can play with it. And when you hover to some tree, for example, you see tree data. If you hover on the car, you see whatever transport data or so. And then if you, if you scroll down, you see data we get directly from the database. And actually, it's, you, it will, it's interactive, so you could change the year if you click on the 2022 on top. Yes, and it will also get uh, updated um, when new data is available. Uh, then you can scroll down a bit more. And then here we have the, in, the, in this gray square, we have the cl uh, climate goals of the city of Basel. And because it's no data, we can actually, yeah, we, we, we made it as a text, and all texts are actually describing the data in a very professional journalistic way by the two journalists of our team. Um, yeah, you can scroll down a bit more. Thank you very much. Even more, even more, even more. So you can see like different uh, topics we had uh, data for, mobility, uh, energy, uh, environment, etc., temperature. And this is the uh, climate trend uh, that uh, Christian did. Um, which shows like uh, the the relevance of the topic of climate in the media. Oh uh, no, sorry, that's not Google of Google search. And then, if you scroll down a little bit, then we have the event section, which shows which events about climate. Like this is an example with the Reaper Cafe you could attend. And this is just the database, so it doesn't need to be shown. <laughs> we don't really need that. Well, I mean, it's it's the data we use for the for the graphs, and th this is like additional data that we didn't necessarily use because we didn't think like we wanted to show some examples, right? But this is not uh, the goal. so. But this is like the data co cockpit with data with journalist explanation about different subjects all around um, data. Yes. And what we would like to be done in future, if we come back to the presentation, is like the map is not interactive yet. So as you saw, like when you hover o on it, uh, you can't see any bubbles or so. So that would be something we want to do. Yeah, this one here, exactly. And um, the event section, we also would like to have it like drawn from some API, which collects all events about climate. Uh, in Basel, for example, or in whatever city you are in. So that's two things that we had as ideas and that we didn't have time to implement. Yes. 
that's it. Uh, unless you want to add something, my team? No? <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Are there any questions for the team? Really? I think it's amazing what you did. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> ah, my stopwatch broke when you started speaking, so we had way more time, but it's okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, next on stage is die Fastnacht in einem Bi die ganze Fastnacht in einem Bilde with Jean Claude, and he also deserves a really warm applause. <laughs> Hey everyone, so the idea was to use an open source tool uh, from a German artist to generate a uh, picture. So you start out with this video uh, on the very, your left, and then it uh, has this moving, um, moving uh, column and then compresses the whole video into one picture and then the end result would look something like this. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, what the idea was, and for that purpose, use an open source tool. Now, there were a few uh, challenges and the stuff I worked on. Uh, the three core challenges was that one, the code was not very user friendly, um, it was very slow, and in order to get a high quality output, you need um, a good frame rate and high resolution video. Um, so the way uh, our team, that is me, tackled it is the first one, I rewrote the library. Uh, number two, uh, I changed the methodology in which way uh, the image is created. So instead of using frames, uh, I went down to the, the pixel level um, and just used the, the arrays in the, in, the, in the picture. And then the last one, uh, I tried a few things to improve the, the, the output quality. One of them was to interpolate between the frames um, to increase the, the frame rate artificially using linear interpolation, but there are more sophisticated methods using deep learning to, uh, to do that even better. Um, but that was out of the scope for the hackathon. So um, here is one of the results with interpolation as well as other considerations when using the, the, the project. So uh, well, without inter interpolation, you see that the person Oh, by the way, this, is, this was done in front of Clara. Um, so on the left-hand side, you see the person uh, walking. He's very, there's not much information. And um, on the right-hand side, uh, yeah, there's more information. Um, considerations to take into account is the angle of the camera. So it needs to be a uh, profile. Um, the distance to the subject is also very important because it, um, it affects the speed at which, uh, well, the pixels move on, 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 the, on the video. So you can see, for instance, the people at uh, closer to the camera are much more narrow because uh, they spend less time uh, in front of the camera versus the people behind it. Um, other things is the frame rate of view, as, as mentioned before, the resolution. Uh, this was shot in 4K, 60 uh, frames per second. Um, and then from the processing point of view, also the time to process the videos um, as the video gets longer, uh, the output also gets larger. Um, and then another thing that needs to be tested is also, since we want to do this for Fastnacht, uh, try it out for larger crowds. So there, the street was not very busy today. Um, so that also might be uh, what should be taken into account when testing it. Uh, code is on GitHub. And then lastly here are the other results. Uh, the first one is uh, a video I found on YouTube uh, about during Fastnacht. Um, you can see the video turned into this, um, where you can see a bit better the, I don't know what that, that is. <laughs> yeah, but what they represent, but uh, yeah, the lanterns. And then uh, to test out uh, different uh, settings, I chose Shib Shibuya Crossing because it has this nice uh, profile uh, video of people walking with more people. Um, so you can see what it would look like if the streets were busier. And then also other failed attempts when the angle was bad or the distance 
uh, well, this comes out. So uh, if someone wants to use it, especially for the Fasnacht, uh, camera placement and uh, tools will be very important to take into account. Yep, that's it. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Yes. How long is the video for that kind of uh, image that you get? And then um, I, I would imagine it's pretty short. And then if you do it for like a longer time, you would like have this huge, 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 huge picture. Yeah. Um, that was actually the, the, the idea to have this huge picture. Um, more as a, like a PR marketing uh, thing. Um, I think this video is not more than a few seconds, um, but also the frame rate plays into uh, like a role in it. So the slower the video, the longer it gets. Um, I didn't do any tests in terms of the output image itself, uh, just in terms of processing. Uh, a 22 second video takes about 10 seconds to process. And then, um, yeah, really depends on whatever input material comes into play. <laughs> it's going to be forever. Thank you so much, Jean-Claude. And team number four, well done. Warm applause, he deserves that. <laughs> we had a, Sami inspired a lot of people and we had a couple of one-man teams, so well done for also working alone. It's hard. Um, next is challenge number six, hacking robots. Who got dead? Carl. <laughs> Hello. So there's going to be a demo later uh, at Bajur about it because we can't do it here. Because we need a wall that we can write on. And it, yeah, on Bajur. Yeah. So it, we're going to have a demo later there, as far as I know. I thought we were going to do it now. I mean, if you are going to want to go there now, okay. You have got five minutes, I'm counting now. <laughs> <laughs> So before we start, you can all scan one of one of them. Um, just just as a thing, there's already votes. A lot of them are no. That's not because people don't want to join. It's just some demos we did. Just we did. 
table a little bit or right so that the no cantus can come up? No not yet. Ah That's on purpose. Okay, so I don't have my slides here now, but how we implemented it is basically we have to upload an SVG and then we can start it with the phone. Um, the data we have here goes to Pocket Stargus, which is using the Republish API for calls. Um, so and we're gonna basically draw the amount of votes each side has. Are you all ready? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. then I'm um, gonna start it. And it's now basically, I have it here. It's going to open a browser and it's going to basically upload the image because there's no API of the robot. So we had to like emulate user inputs. So it logs in, generates the image, uploads it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's done. And now you can see like the votes here already of the image. And then now. The, the small down below? This is the small below. Yeah. That's, those are the votes. Don't worry, most of the no votes were already present. And now I have to go on my mobile phone because unfortunately there's no API and I have to do it with a mobile phone. And I can select it and I can start it and hopefully it works. <laughs> so now the image. Yes. And now it takes a while and it will print all of the votes coming from the API. One minute left. <laughs> 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 That's not even my presentation. <laughs> what? That's just a demo. <laughs> Where's the presentation here? Did someone delete it again? I don't have any way to display the presentation. from the bottom, yes. And one of the problems with the robot was that it implements SVG, but only very little um, subset. So what we had to do is we render the SVG normally, and then we have to run it through an optimizer that basically changes all the SVG lines to a path, to a single path, and then the robot actually understands it and, and can draw it. And yeah, now it will draw all the 20 votes or whatever they are in total. And See you in like 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 M maybe you should go back and we then we come. I don't know. If you have my presentation, I have it here on the phone. Yeah. There you go. You can just like. Yeah. Carol, one question. Okay. Oh, question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, as you also saw, I had to use my mobile phone. Um. Unfortunately, you can't start it on. Oh. So you can't start it on the website, so I couldn't like automate it easily. Um, if you use uh, like an emulator and maybe like auto key or whatever to move the, uh, move the mouse, that would also be possible. Um, so we, I didn't get to finish that. There are a few other things that we also have to do. Is every time I would now um, update the votes, he has to reprint everything else, like everything again. Um, but what we would want to do is that he only prints the new votes. So we have to diff the two images and only upload the new ones. And because it has to be manu uh, done manually, we also have to generate the image kind of manually because if we just keep on generating the image, people will have to go through all the image and print them one by one. So that's an improvement for the future. <laughs> um, yeah, as I showed before, this is using like Puppeteer. Puppeteer basically just spawns a browser and it can click like a user would. Um, usually it happens in a headless mode, which means you don't see the browser, but I now have it in non-headless mode so you can see it. And yeah, now you can see yeah, the votes. 
and yeah, that's basically it. All right, all right, all right. Well done. Thank you. Okay, you have 30 seconds to grab a snack and a drink, and then we continue. They call me the dictator for a reason. Okay, in case you were curious, here is Carl's presentation as well. I'm sorry you didn't have the time to shine. Yes, so the things on the left, uh, the things you see, that's when I printed my first SVG. Even though in the SVG they were next to each other, they went down because it doesn't support SVG Ah. You did a really good job. Well done. Well done. Yay. Okay. And this, how it was implemented? Okay. I think you told us that, right? Yeah. And here we go. And this is how the SVG looks with the model. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And you are, you are, uh, what do you call it? Get, uh, getränkt? Anyways, um, so you've been drinking now, you've been having a snack, and we continue with challenge number 8 slash 10, who was Team Zuri. Please come on stage. It is your time. Well done! Oh, uh, no. Come on! <laughs> Break. Uh, you can do in German. Yeah. Ciao. Verstehen alle Deutsch? Jetzt schon? Okay. Cool. Ciao, Thomas. <lacht> Nein. Ähm, genau, also eigentlich haben wir eine andere, das war gar nicht mehr unsere Challenge, ähm, weil, wir, weil wir gemerkt haben, dass, also eigentlich wollten wir eine nice neue Registrierungsseite machen und dann haben wir gemerkt, uns fehlen wie die Daten. Wir wissen gar nicht, wie viele Leute brechen zum Beispiel ab, wenn sie auf der Seite sind. Ähm, und registrieren sich dann nicht oder haben wir zu wenig Leute auf der Seite, also uns haben wie die Daten gefehlt und darum hatten wir gestern dann eigentlich praktisch eine neue Member-Strategie herausgearbeitet, was aber keine Challenge ähm, war und heute haben wir dann ähm, Datensätze analysiert, also bei Zürich.ch kann man seit 2016 Member werden und wir haben über also etwa 3500 Datensätze Sätze von Personen, die jemals Member waren. Und die haben wir jetzt ähm, analysiert. So, da sieht man, wo sie wohnen. Nee. <lacht> ja, weil ich glaube, das bringt auch viel, wenn man so ein bisschen... 
genau, ein bisschen Hintergrundwissen zu haben. Ähm, ja. So we have, uh, we, we started reading in the CSV file with some Python library, like I think today at 11 we started. Um, so yeah, I had a, a CSV file that contained basically the, the members and when the record was created. And um, if the person paid until a certain date, like users pay yearly or quarterly or every month, And yeah, so it's not really a big thing, right? So yeah, just reading some CSV file and make some plots. Um, yeah, we wanted to have uh, some a little bit of insight how how are the users behaving because I think on average per year they have 40% of the subscribers uh, quitting. And um, I think uh, we see it When it started, I think 2015, 16 with real subscriptions until now, I think November 2022, we can see that there is some a trend of having more subscribers every year, subscribing. Um, yeah. Ich mache es auf Deutsch. Nee. <laughs> um, here you can see the Corona year. So it was 2020 was a nice, nice year to gain members. It was the best um, campaign we ever had, thanks to Corona. Ah, faster. Yeah. And um, yeah, now 2022 is not over yet, but maybe we'll have the same amount of new members, hopefully. And then we made a plot, actually wanted to have a, another plot that just shows the, the trend of registrations, um, not only really um, like in a, histo his, in a histogram per month, so that would be January to December over the whole range, uh, but yeah, we had didn't have time, so I just did that one. and. We can see that in winter people are more subscribing and of course in summer they are not less interested reading news. I think that uh, could be explained with that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So and then finally then we also we had we knew um, people paid until Uh, such a date, so in the future, that means they're still subscribers. Everybody else, we were saying, okay, when the record was created until the last time they paid, that's the time they were subscri uh, so subscribers, even though they might have cancelled in the meantime and resubscribed. But uh, that just like shows distribution of, um, uh, yeah, so a histori histogram of, of all the, the, subscrip uh, the duration of the subscription in days. Um, it's not written here. For, I'm sorry. So it means that the most people are subscribed roughly a year, I would say, because here in between we, we have yeah the year boundary right of 365. So yeah, I think the mo we can say the most people um, stay a year, and um, yeah, probably a lot of those people have resubscribed as well in the meantime. Yeah, but also here we can see we have quite some people do not stay very long. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that was the, the thing. And here on the button, you can see it, it was made by uh, with Streamlit. I think something from Uber. Yeah. Well done. While you're switching the computer presentation, any questions? So one thing I think, and we which mm, doesn't need to be, mm, we can ask. So you really had to pivot from what your initial idea was of what a challenge could be, 
why are you leaving me so fast? <laughs> um, and you really had to pivot and rethink and they actually didn't have a real idea what they're going to do and present today until 11, more or less, in the morning. So all they did, uh, the, the, all the plots and stuff, they did it in the, in the last few hours. And I love this example because it shows that sometimes you are like thinking and discussing so much and then by finding other answers or finding data points, suddenly you kind of make a way for proactive or efficient solutions. How do you feel about that? How did you feel when we... We also wanted to show where the members live, in which Kreis, for example, that would have been nice, but we didn't have time to to do it. And but I think it's nice to work with this data set, yeah. And at least we could show something. Yeah. Thank you so much, and thank you also for uh, allowing me to help you a little bit. Okay, so next on stage we have Responsible News Recommender System Challenge Number 12 with Lorenz. <laughs> So thank you and hi. Um, you see um, uh, the, the scope of this uh, challenge was very big. We can man ein transparentes System bauen, das plattformübergreifend automatisierte und oder personalisierte Artikel, Empfehlungen macht. What is left is uh, on the next slide. Um, I think I have to. So, um, Actually, the resp responsible recommender system is a whole field in itself. Um, I only um, touched the very tip of the iceberg here. Um, the actual project achievement is uh, I explored ways to boost the diversity of categories represent represented in most clicked content lists. So you see th those tiny lists and, and news websites where you see which content is popular. Um, so, I've lost my way. Um, I actually uh, played around with the SRG APIs in this project. Um, I only concentrated on the most clicked video endpoint. Um, regrettably, um, you only get like 200 records out, out of that, so the data set is quite um, small. Regardless, um, I've been coming up with a little enhancement over the um, actual approach, um, which resulted in this here. Um, so what I did, it I um, tried to normalize over um, the categories, the most viewed articles, and then combine them in order to generate a more diverse uh, recommendation list um, with uh, recommendations from more um, categories, actually. So um, I think this is not the end of the story. There's uh, much to, impr to improve overall. For example, the categories categories it themselves are um, taken from the API, but it would also be interesting to generate them from the content uh, with subject matter detection. Um, yes. So are there any questions? So actually, um, I've just normalized uh, the, like I, I did a score-based system. The score is calculated over um, the topmost or the top reads of one category and combined with um, a normalized score over the whole list. It's a qu quite easy thing. Yeah, just read the source code, it's obvious. <laughs> I, I, I actually have um, difficulties to, to actually define what exactly it is, so it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, quite, uh, it's uh, uh, documented in the readme, and um, if that doesn't help, it's uh, easy to read the source code. 
Uh, well, actually, she she read the the readme, and I um, so she she said that it seems to be um, <laughs> it doesn't seem to be quatch. So <laughs> <laughs> not it, it's enough. it's it's not quatch. It's no science, <laughs> but it's no quatch. So. <laughs> Talking about Quatsch, is there anyone who doesn't understand German? Weil wir können, das heißt eigentlich auf Deutsch switchen jetzt. Um, danke, Lorenz. Und wir kommen zur Challenge Nummer 17. Das ist die vorletzte. Die Wiedergeburt Renaissance der Medien mit äh, Laurent und David und Hansi. Hansi? Nicht da. Und Claudius. Claudius? Du auch? Okay, warmer Applaus fürs Team. Wir haben ja da mehrere, mehrere Mikrofons. Okay, okay, okay. einschalten. Hallo, hallo. Yes, hallo. Genau, wir haben uns Gedanken gemacht, was die Medien eigentlich brauchen. Und ich glaube, was eigentlich alle brauchen, einen Grund, um überhaupt gelesen zu werden. Also vor allem kleinere Lokale, die noch nicht so viel publizieren. Und eine Tageszeitung sind, die irgendwie schon zur Gewohnheit wurde. Also muss man halt irgendwie Wege finden, dass man zur Gewohnheit wird. Sprich, wir haben dann ähm, daraus haben wir gefunden, gut, wir stellen jetzt einfach die, so gut wie es geht, lokale Informationen für dich persönlich zusammen. Ähm, und haben dann geschaut, also wir haben dann Basel gerade als Ausgangspunkt genommen, weil wir ja hier sind, und mal geschaut, ähm, was es alles, also was man überhaupt so anschaut den ganzen Tag. Dann geht man äh, am Morgen das Wetter checken, äh, irgendeinen Veranstaltungskalender, dann gibt es. Sachen wie freie Parkplätze oder wann ist die Kartensammlung etc. Äh, etc. Et Meldungen aus Politik. Genau, so ist es im Moment. Und dann haben wir geschaut, was gibt es für Daten. Wir sind dann eigentlich auf die APIs vom, der, vom Kanton Basel-Stadt äh, gekommen, haben uns an denen orientiert, ähm, diese angezapft und dann Mont äh, gebaut. Äh, ja, ich... Äh ich würde euch gerne die Webseite vorstellen. Ja. Also eben, ähm, die Idee ist jetzt ein bisschen äh, ja, Übersicht zu verschaffen, über was denn Basel alles zu offerieren hat. Wir haben jetzt einfach per Default mal unsere vier Kategorien, Sport, Kultur, Events und Facts. Und wenn man sich neben einloggen würde, einloggen, können wir das natürlich auch ein bisschen personalisieren. Und dann auf der linken Seite haben wir so ein Community Feature, wo in dem Sinne Community kann Sachen einschreiben kann, also Inserat oder Sportnachrichten, generelle Fakten. Man kann es dann eigentlich auch so ein bisschen sortieren. Und in dem Sinne so das Kilo Feature <lacht> ist in dem Sinne, dass man dann da einfach eine Straße kann eingeben kann. Genau, und nachher hat sie in dem Sinne jetzt aus dieser Straße jetzt realisiert, okay, ich meine wahrscheinlich, okay, das 4 hat jetzt einfach irgendwie angenommen, aber Postleitzahl, jetzt einfach, also von Google bekommen wir das. Und jetzt da sehen wir einfach, was in dem Sinne dort machbar wäre. Äh, es sind ja in dem Sinne schon die verschiedenen Open APIs angesprochen worden, wir haben jetzt nur eine in dem Sinne eingearbeitet. Ähm, ja, einfach um so ein das Community, das Lokale zu vermitteln. Äh, aber Open API, äh, wir in dem Sinne auch eine Open API äh, zur Verfügung stellen. Das ist einfach mit Swagger gemacht. Also wenn man ein bisschen möchte umspielen, kann man das auch machen. Die Idee wäre jetzt einfach, dass andere Applikationen in dem Sinne auch können, äh, in dem Sinne unser Wissen in dem Sinne wieder reusen oder vielleicht auch mal bei uns irgend so einen Kommentar erstellen, dass vielleicht einfach so ein bisschen die lokale Community so ein bisschen zusammenkommt. Ähm, ja. Und was jetzt weniger wichtig ist, eben zum den da halt wirklich auch einen Kommentar zu verfassen, muss man sich einfach da mit, äh, mit Google einloggen. Ähm, ja, mache ich jetzt gar nicht. Aber <lacht> ja. Gut. Ja, das ist jetzt mal ein Anfang und grundsätzlich lässt sich das Ganze natürlich mit Zürcher Datensatz für Zürich, mit äh, Berner Datensätze für die Hauptstadt und mit weiteren Datensätzen für weitere Städte ausbauen und mit äh, national verfügbaren Datensätzen auch ausbauen. 
beispielsweise vom öffentlichen Verkehr gibt es für die ganze Schweiz Realtime-Daten. Das heißt, wenn man weiß, wo der User ist, kann man ihm sagen, deine nächste ÖV-Haltestelle ist da und da und da fährt das Tram und der Bus Nummer so und so um die und die Uhrzeit. Also ein, ein ganz schönes äh, Widget, das sich beispielsweise eben in Barjour, Mont Barjour und weitere Seiten einbauen lässt. Okay, wir sind zwei vor fünf und ich habe ein bisschen Angst, ähm, weil ich mir nicht gerade nicht sicher bin, ob es die nächste Challenge überhaupt gibt. <lacht> äh, nein, wir sind schon richtig. Hä? Aha. Hä? Gibt es eure Challenge nicht, Oleg? Ihr habt es eigentlich schon gestern gemacht, oder? Ah, also ich habe leider nicht mitgemacht, ich weiß nicht, was ihr gemacht habt. Aber gestern hat Oleg, äh, glaube ich, eine Mastodon. Ähm, in Dankeschön. Ich sage einfach zwei, zwei Sachen dazu. Ich switche äh, nur mal ganz schnell auf, 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 auf Englisch, oder? Nein, ich bleibe auf Deutsch. Also, nein, grundsätzlich vielen Dank für den Workshop. Wir haben alle eure Ideen und Fragen gesammelt in einem äh, Pad, das ist jetzt auf dem Hack Open Data CH Projekt äh, Ergebnis äh, publiziert. Ähm, wir hatten drei verschiedene Versuche gemacht, seit gestern eine Mastodon-Instanz aufzusetzen. Äh, alles sollte einfach One Click und los damit äh, funktionieren. Es hat wirklich gezeigt, dass es gar nicht so einfach ist, ein, ein, ein Mastodon-Server zu kriegen. Man fragt sich, wie kommen all die Leute auf eine Mastodon-Instanz? Ähm, jedenfalls, wir haben ge gefunden, den einfachsten Weg zu einem einiges eigenen Server ist diese kleine Kiste. Also wenn, auf einem Raspberry Pi kann man ganz gut Mastodon installieren. Aber im Netz im Moment ähm, ist nicht so einfach. Jedenfalls, ja, wir kriegen das hin. Wir, wir haben mit Ungleich und ein paar anderen Firmen gesprochen über ein äh, Hosting-Angebot und ähm, gute Tipps zusammengefunden, wie man einerseits ähm, Mastodon für den Journalismus betrieben soll, für die für gute Recherche, welche Regeln man brauchen könnte und so. Seit gestern habe hab ich mitbekommen, die Deutsche Journalismusverband hat auch eine offizielle Instanz für deutsche Journalisten ähm, äh, annonciert und wir hoffen, dass es bald in der Schweiz auch dafür eine Sch äh, Wellenschwelle gibt. Heute haben wir den Fokus ein bisschen gewechselt auf den Sicherheitsthema, ähm, weil viele Leute, die, im, ähm, die Fragen haben zu Leuten im Open-Source-Bereich, ähm, haben Fragen zu Inter Informationssicherheit, Infosec. Und da gab es, <lacht> gibt es ein zweites Resultat aus der Hackdays, eine kleine Zusammenfassung von guten Ressourcen, damit wir an alle künftigen Hackathons und Hackdays könnten Journalisten wie euch ähm, besser helfen, eure Laptops zu prüfen, eure Netzwerke zu sichern und auch im federierten sozialen Netzwerkbereich sicher umzugehen. Also das haben wir entschieden, das wäre auch ein sehr wichtiger Thema zum nachher verfolgen in Form von Workshops oder Booklets oder was noch immer. Also vielen, vielen Dank und es wäre cool, mit euch zu hacken. Yay, was Ole gesagt hat, stimmt. Dankeschön und danke auch nochmal zum schnell ähm, Recap machen. Ähm, wir werden auch alle Projekte und alle Informationen nochmal mit euch teilen im, im nächsten E-Mail. Und ich glaube, wir kommen hiermit zum offiziellen Schlussteil. Falls ihr es noch nicht getan habt, bitte teilt doch irgendwas auf LinkedIn oder Twitter mit uns. Und jetzt bitte ich doch den Lora und die Nina auf die Bühne. Oder auch hier nach vorne auf jeden Fall, ist keine richtige Bühne, aber ähm, weil wir hier zum emotionalen Teil <lacht> kommen. Äh, also auf jeden Fall von uns als Open Data ein riesiges Dankeschön an euch und ans Vertrauen natürlich. An euer Vertra für eu Danke für euer Vertrauen an, an mich, an uns. Ähm, und... Ähm, das Danke sagen an die Stiftung. Genau, ja, also das ist natürlich, das, es klingt immer so hohl, aber es ist wirklich so. Also wir können das alles nur machen und wir finden das mega cool, wenn wir so kreative Köpfe verbinden und interdisziplinär und alles. Und wir können das wirklich nur machen, weil es Leute gibt, die denken, das möchte man unterstützen und wir geben da Geld rein und das sind alle Unterstützungen. Und Kerstin von Wikimedia sitzt auch hier und ist wirklich auch interessiert daran, was da geschieht. Und ich finde das mega cool. Und ja, Laura und ich haben viele Gesuche geschrieben und wir sind sehr glücklich, <lacht> dass auch Geld zurückgeflossen ist. Nein, und wir finden es mega cool. Und also die, alle Medien, die mitmachen, mega lässig, all ihr, eh, die dabei seid. Mega cool. Ja. Willst du auch noch was sagen? <lacht> ja, vielen Dank vor allem an euch, dass ihr gekommen seid. Erzählt es rum. 
Ja. Nina organisiert, glaube ich, das nächste Jahr wieder. <lacht> 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 Nein, ich sage euch, also die, die Organisation ist äh, sehr anstrengend, muss ich sagen. Vielen Dank, <lacht> vielen Dank an Nina, sie hat da mega viel reingegeben. Ja. Ja, danke euch. Und auch danke an Darien, dass ihr unser Vertrauen nicht missbraucht habt. Das ist auch nicht. <lacht> 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 ja. ja, und auch wie letztes Jahr wieder deine. Moderation ist super und ich glaube, du kannst Leute mitreißen. Ich könnte das nicht. Ja. Ja. ja, und danke Oleg für alle, alle Tech-Hilfe. Ich habe das Gefühl, ich kann man alles fragen. Und danke vielmals Gami für die Unterstützung und die Hilfe und die Organisation. Und am Schluss hast du so eine riesen Challenge noch gemacht. Einfach so nebenbei. Und halb acht Yoga. Danke vielmals. Es gibt, noch es gibt noch etwas, ja, und vielen Dank an Silas. Er ist da zwei Tage rumgetackelt und ich glaube, es ist wahrscheinlich der medial best abgedeckteste, abgedeckte Hackathon, den es je gab, vielleicht. <lacht> <lacht> Aber ich war auch noch nicht an so vielen, darum <lacht> kann ich es eigentlich gar nicht beurteilen. Aber ich, ich habe schon ein paar erste Fotos gesehen und sieht super aus, ich freue mich drauf. Ähm, wer haben wir noch? Ja, klar, also, ja, sonst sind eigentlich nur Leute, die nicht da sind. Ähm, der Nick Lazy ist da. Und, äh, Nick ist da, Nick vielen ist Dank, da Nick. <lacht> <lacht> vielen, vielen, vielen Dank. Und äh, natürlich auch Lacey und sowieso das ganze Team. Wir haben es äh, sehr genossen, hier äh, sein zu dürfen und ja. uns zu verpflegen. Ich glaube, es, das Buffet ist jetzt schon fast wieder leer. Ja. <lacht> wir, haben, noch was wir, haben gehört, wir haben gehört, es war der Hackathon mit dem besten Essen. Ever. <lacht> Ah oh ja, Darien ja eh. Also mega, danke. Ich wiederhole Laurens Worte. Mega Modi. Und natürlich. I love you, Joe Harris. Ja. Und es wird ja eh nur, also es geht nur, weil ihr da seid. Und mega cool <lacht> seid. Ihr habt so hart, so toll, so fantastisch gearbeitet. Also ein riesen Dankeschön an euch, alle, die noch bis zum letzten Minute hier sind. Yes. Es ist fünf nach fünf, ich habe noch euren Zug. Äh, nehmt ein bisschen was zu essen mit und ich glaube hiermit, großer Applaus für alle. Well done. Silas, <lacht> <lacht> Dankeschön.